What are the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. May you live a blessed life that bears the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit through the messages of the world-renowned revivalist, Rev. Dr. J. Rock Lee. The scripture for this service is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law.
dear GCN TV viewers and Manmin TV viewers, Matthew 5, verses 15 and 16 says, Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In the Bible, there are many scenes where the Father God is so pleased with good deeds and goodness. Those who do good and righteous deeds, Father God calls them the righteous, and He praises them and gives answers to their prayers. Becoming good, becoming righteous, and becoming holy. You don't know how pleased Father God is. I hope that you will realize the pleasing will of God the Father and fulfill it quickly. When the children of God receive the Holy Spirit, their minds and deeds become good. Through those good deeds, they become the light of the world, and worldly people come to give glory to God. Likewise, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are not born only in the heart. The good things of the heart will certainly reveal themselves in deeds. This way, the believers become the light that brightens the world and give out the aroma of Christ Jesus. It is the case with the goodness, the sixth fruit of the Holy Spirit, that I'm going to explain today. If you bear the fruit of goodness in your heart completely, you will give out the fragrance of Christ wherever you may go. Therefore, many souls will come to feel Jesus Christ through you, and they can give glory to God the Father. I pray in the name of the Lord that you may bear such fruit, each fruit of the Holy Spirit beautifully, so that you can give glory to God wherever you eat, drink, or whatever you do. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Goodness is the quality of being gentle, considerate, kind-hearted, and virtuous. In the spiritual sense, however, it is the heart that seeks goodness in the Holy Spirit, which is the goodness in the truth. The heart that seeks and works goodness. If we bear this fruit of goodness completely, we will have the Lord's heart that is pure and spotless. When you pray, you pray so fervently to become spotless and blameless. The pure heart of spotless and blameless, that is the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes, even the unbelievers who haven't received the Holy Spirit follow goodness in their lives to some extent. At this time, the standard with which a person discerns between good and evil is their conscience. To understand this goodness as a fruit of the Holy Spirit, we first have to understand this conscience. Worldly people discern and judge whether something is good or evil according to their just, uh, conscience. In the absence of having pangs of conscience, worldly people think they are good and righteous. But this conscience is different from person to person. Because the process by which the individual conscience is formed is different from person to person. You know, conscience is not what you can buy and keep it in your heart. Conscience is the standard to discern between good and evil, which is based on the foundation of one's nature. Conscience is the standard to discern between good and evil, which is based on the foundation of one's nature. Each person has different nature, so each person has different conscience. So all people's natures, they're all different between husband and wife, parents and children, and brothers and sisters. If people have the same conscience, then they have the same thoughts and mind. Therefore, then there is no reason to argue. Right? 
One's nature depends on the kind of life energy one is born with and the kind of environment where he is raised. Those children who receive good life energy have relatively good natures. And people who are raised in a good environment, seeing and hearing many good things, are likely to form good conscience. On the other hand, if one is born with, with many evil natures from his parents and comes in contact with many evil things, his nature and conscience is likely to become evil. Born with the evil natures of his parents, seeing and hearing many evil things in an evil environment, as he grows up, he is likely to become evil gradually. His conscience is formed in the evil, so how evil his standards of judgment and values would be. For example, children who are taught to be honest will have you know, qualms of conscience when they tell a lie. Well, they were told not to tell a lie from their parents. Their parents became a good example for them, and they were raised in such environment. So even when they tell a lie, a tiny lie, they blush, have qualms, and are embarrassed. Now, how well educated they are from their parents. But a child who is raised among liars habitually lies, and it is nothing to him to tell a lie. He doesn't think it is a lie. Well, you tell him, why are you lying? And he says, what are you talking about? When did I lie? He doesn't even realize what he did. So you exactly point out where he lied. Then he talks back to you. Why is it a lie? Because he doesn't think that is a lie. To a person who doesn't tell a lie, or who didn't even learn how to tell a lie, it is an obvious lie. However, to a person who lives by lying, it's not. It is the same with foul language. If your friends around speak foul languages, then you see foul language, hear foul language, and speak foul language. Later on, even extreme foul language is like nothing to you. <laughs> well, I should be able to speak in you know, such a foul language to make it uh, realistic, but you know, <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I forgot. <laughs> well, though I rarely walk on the street, you know, when you walk on the street, you can easily see young people or students talk, right? Half of their conversation is full of foul language. You know, some dirty movies or soap operas are so full of foul language, right? Their consciences are stained with evil so much that they don't even have pangs of conscience, thinking that is okay to lie. Also, even though children are raised by the same parents in the same environment, they receive things in different ways. Some children just obey their parents, while some other children have very strong wills and tend not to obey. Then, even though siblings are raised by the same parents, their consciences will be formed differently. Likewise, each one has a unique nature, and depending on the time and place, people's common sense, knowledge, and values are different. Conscience forms differently depending on the social and economic values where they grow up. Each society has a different value system. And the standards of 100 years ago, 50 years ago, and now are all different. And each nation has its own. For example, when they used to have slaves, they didn't think it was wrong to beat the slaves and force them to work. About 30 years ago, it was socially unacceptable if women expo I mean, exposed their bodies in broadcasting.
As mentioned, conscience becomes different according to individual, area, and time. Those who think they follow their conscience are merely following what they think is good. However, they are not absolutely good. Compared to 30 or 40 years ago, today's world is full of sins. Compared to that with 100 or 200 years ago, how much more would today's world be full of sins? Moreover, if compared to 2,000 years ago at the time of the Lord, how much more world today's world become dirty. However, our Lord measures according to the standard of the times of 2,000 years ago, not of today. Though many generations have passed by and changed, today's standard is not the way our Lord measures. He judges according to the good and unchanged conscience of the old times. He does not adjust his standard to today's generation, which is changed and full of sins. That's why it is really hard to find the souls that can be saved. You should cultivate your heart and restore it to the heart of 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and ultimately 2,000 years ago. Through the Word of God, you can cultivate your heart. Any conscience or values cannot be the standard to measure us. Only the word of truth is the standard to measure us. And just knowing the truth is not enough. Only when someone who changed into the truth and goodness teaches and guides, then it is a true teaching and guidance. Just teaching the truth is not the way it works. It is the hypocrisy, as our Lord said. Though he hears and teaches, if he does not practice, then he is just a hypocrite. Woe to you, said our Lord. Those who could not, they, they, they couldn't be saved. It's clearly written how. It is clearly written how to receive salvation in the New Testament. So those who think they are conscious merely pursue what is good in their own eyes, but they are not absolutely good. But we who are believers in God have the same standard with which we distinguish between good and evil. We have the word of God as the standard, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter how many years pass by, the absolute truth does not adjust to today's degenerated standard. Spiritual goodness is to have this truth as our conscience and follow it. It is the heart to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit and seek goodness. But just by having the desire to follow goodness, we cannot say we have borne the fruit of goodness. We can safely say we bear the fruit only when that desire to follow goodness is shown as action. Matthew 12, verse 35 says, The good man brings out of his good treasure uh, what is good. Proverbs 12, 22, verse 11 also says, He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious, the king is his friend. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious, the king is his friend. As in the verses that I just mentioned, those who truly seek goodness will naturally have good actions that can be seen externally. Wherever they go and whomever they meet, they show generosity and love with good words and deeds. Just like a person who spread perfume will give out a nice fragrance, those with goodness will give out the fragrance of Christ. Give off the fragrance of Christ. I hope you will check yourself carefully. Some people long to go into spirit, so they follow spiritual persons and want to have friendship with them. Well, this is really good. 
They enjoy hearing and learning the truth. They are easily touched and shed many tears too. But they cannot go into spirit just because they have the longing heart. If they heard and learned, they have to cultivate it in their hearts and actually practice it. For example, if you only like If you only like being near spiritual persons and stay away from those who are not good, is it really longing for goodness? You can learn many things even from those who are not good. You can feel enlightened even from them. It's not that you can learn something only from those who are good. You can learn something even from a foul-mouthed person. All you have to do is not imitate him. Uh, many people do not trust him since he speaks such foul language quite often. He always breaks peace, argues, and quarrels with others. Then you don't call others names. You try to speak only good words. You have fellowship with spiritual people. They speak good and gentle words. They are trusted, loved, and respected by all, right? Then you can come to realize, I should be talking and acting like them. You learn something like this. You compare and learn through relativity. You learn something from this person and from that person, that thing. If you have fellowship only with good persons, you cannot learn both good and bad points. So if you stay away from those who are not good, then that is not the heart really longing for goodness. Or if you just diligently hear a Uh, and hear about goodness and realize your shortcomings, but lack the effort to actually do good, can you really say you are longing for goodness? You might think you are longing for goodness very much, but I hope that you will carefully check yourself as to whether you lack actual deeds of accumulating goodness yourself. From this point on, let's look into more detail at what it means to gain spiritual goodness by pursuing goodness and truth in the Holy Spirit. In fact, goodness is a very broad concept. God's nature is goodness, and that goodness is embedded throughout the Bible. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It was the law of the Old Testament days. But still, Father God's love is in the law. If Father God doesn't and didn't say like that, then what would society or a nation have been? It would have been a den of thieves. Only the strong would have survived. Only the strong would have survived and the weak would not. That's why the law is the goodness of God the Father. The law is goodness. The law itself. It was meant to be. Without the law, there was no order. The weak could not have survived and not, only the strong and the robbers could have survived. In the New Testament days, however, it's not that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Love your enemies. Why? Those who accepted Jesus as their Savior, the Holy Spirit is in them and helps them so they can discern and pursue goodness. They can do that. The order is kept in the church like that. This is the difference from the Old Testament days. Old Testament days is not the days of the Holy Spirit. So Father God gave such law. Without it, it is not goodness. It is not love either. It is just a mess. For example, right after the independence of our country, our society was in chaos. Public security was broken. and our society was thrown into chaos. Mob is there in every alley, and going through alley is not easy. It was not easy. But a verse from which we can sense the aroma of goodness very well is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. It says, Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in the Spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. 
but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. If everything can be done like this, what a lovely church it is. In the church, it should be done like this, by all means. It is the same with your home, workplace, and society. It is the same with every single department of our church. It should be like that. Actually, we have such departments in our church. Staffs in there are at peace with everyone. They love Father God so much that they are faithful to the given duties without a complaint. There are such departments. Those who see goodness in the Lord will support even the works that they don't really agree with. That's what the Bible tells us to do, regardless of your will or your mind. They are humble, and they don't have any sense of vanity to be acknowledged or revealed. They not only faithfully perform their duties, but also care for other people's works. Dear brothers and sisters, in Luke chapter 10, we have the parable of the Good Samaritan. A man was robbed while traveling, and he was half dead. A priest was passing by and saw that he was dying, but that priest just passed by him. A Levite also saw him, but he also just passed by him as well. Priests and Levites are the ones who know the Word of God and who are serving God. They know the law better than any of the people, but they also take pride in serving God well. But they didn't show the deed that they were supposed to show when they had to follow the will of God. Of course, they could say they had reasons they couldn't help them. But if they had goodness, they couldn't just ignore a person who was in desperate need of their help. Later, a Samaritan was passing by and saw this man who had been robbed. This Samaritan had pity on him and covered his wounds. This Samaritan didn't know the truth. He didn't know the law. However, he had goodness in his heart, and he showed a deed. Though you hear, know, and teach the truth, if you don't practice the truth, what is the use? The one who does not know the truth and practice it, he is better. He carried him on an animal and took him to an inn and asked the innkeeper to take care of him. He promised the innkeeper that he would pay the cost on his way back. If the Samaritan would have thought selfishly, he wouldn't have any reason to do what he did. He too was busy, and he could suffer loss of time and money if he involved himself in all total strangers' affairs. Also, he could have just given him first aid, but he didn't have to ask the innkeeper to take care of him, promising him that he would pay the cost later. 
But he, because he had goodness, he couldn't just ignore a person who was dying. Even though he would suffer loss of time and money, and even though he was busy, he couldn't just overlook a person who was in desperate need of his help. When he couldn't help this person by himself, he asked another person to help him. If he also had passed him by for his own reason, in the future, the Samaritan would probably have had the burden of it on his heart. If a good person passed someone by without helping him, then the memory haunts him as a burden. He will regret it. Why wouldn't I have done goodness at that time? However, those who don't have goodness cannot even remember it. There is nothing to regret for them. What a big difference. He'd have continuously questioned and blamed himself, thinking, I wonder what happened to that man who was injured. I should have saved him even if I had to suffer a loss. God is watching me, and how could I have done that? Spiritual goodness is being unable to bear if we don't choose the way of goodness, feeling as if somebody was pulling your ankle. And so, we do choose the good things in all things. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, another verse that lets us feel spiritual goodness is Matthew 12, verses 19 and 20. This is about the spiritual goodness of Jesus. Verse 19 says, He will not quarrel nor cry out nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He doesn't quarrel, nor he cry out, nor does anyone hear his voice in the street. Usually when we see those people who are considered to be good by others, we see that they don't have any troubles or problems with anybody. Just like saying, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets, they are so quiet and they don't quarrel with anybody. They don't speak of other people's faults or shortcomings. They don't try to flaunt themselves or to raise themselves up among others. Even though they suffer unreasonably, they don't complain. Now, next, verse 20 says, A better reed he will not break off, and a smoldering wick he will not put out, until he leads justice to victory. Even when we grow a tree or plants, if they have bruised leaves or branches, we will usually cut them off at least for other branches, right? Also, when a wick is smoldering, a light is not bright, and it gives out fumes and smoke, so people just extinguish it. But those who have the spiritual goodness will not break a battered reed or put out a smoldering wick. If there is a slightest bit of chance of recovery, they cannot cut that laugh, I mean, they cannot cut the life off, and they try to open a way of life for others. Here, the battered reed refers to those who are filled with sins and evil of this world. The smoldering wick symbolizes those whose hearts are so stained with evil that the light of their soul is about to die out. It is unlikely that these people who are like battered reeds or smoldering wicks will accept the Lord. Even though they believe in God, their deeds are no different from the worldly people. They even speak against the Holy Spirit or stand against God. At the time of Jesus, there were many, there were many who didn't believe in Jesus. And even though they saw such amazing works of power, they still stood against the works of the Holy Spirit. Everything our Lord Jesus did was goodness. He cured the sick. He didn't ask for money. He didn't tell a lie. He didn't cheat. He didn't do anything wrong. However, people didn't believe in Him, but they did evil to destroy Him. Those who they, those who they saw know the Word of God. There were many people who stood against the works of the Holy Spirit. Still, Jesus looked at them with faith 
until the end and opened opportunities for them to receive salvation. Today, even in the churches, there are many souls who are like battered reeds and smoldering wheats. They call Lord, Lord with their lips, but still live in sins. Some of them even stand against God. With their weak faith, they stumble in temptation and stop attending church. After doing things that are recognized as evil in the church, they are so embarrassed that they leave the church. If we have goodness, however, we should first stretch out our hands to them. Some people want to be loved and acknowledged in the church, but when it doesn't happen, the evil in them comes out. They become zealous of those who are loved by church members and those who are advancing in spirit. Then they speak ill of them. They don't gather their heart for a certain work if it is not initiated by them, and they try to find fault with those works. Even in these cases, those who have the fruit of goodness will accept these people who let their evil out. They don't try to distinguish who is right or wrong, or good or evil, and then break them all. They treat others in goodness with a truthful heart, and then eventually touch their hearts. This is the spiritual goodness. Of course, if the others continue to show increasing evil, they will fall into the way of death even though we show goodness to them. But even in these cases, we will not just set a limit of our endurance and forsake them if they go over that limit. It is the spiritual goodness to try to allow them to seek spiritual life without giving up until the end. Before the final judgment day, we will try to give chances and look at them with hope continually so that they can be saved. Dear brothers and sisters, as you have listened to this message so far, you might have some question. You might be confused as to how this spiritual goodness is differentiated from other spiritual characteristics. In other words, in the parable of God in the Good Samaritan, he acts, I mean, his acts can be described as charitable in mind and merciful. And if we don't quarrel or raise our voices, then we must be at peace and in, in humbleness. Then aren't all these things included in the character of spiritual goodness? Of course, charitableness of heart, mercy, peace, and humbleness all belong within goodness. As mentioned previously, goodness is the nature of God, and it is a very broad concept. But the distinctive aspects of spiritual goodness are the desire to follow such goodness and the strength to actually practice it. The focus is not on mercy of having pity on others and helping them itself. The focus is on the goodness with which the Samaritan couldn't just pass by when he was supposed to have mercy. Besides, not quarreling and not speaking out is a part of being humble. However, the character of spiritual goodness in these cases is that we cannot break peace because we follow spiritual goodness. Rather than crying out and being recognized, we want to be humble because we follow this goodness. We want to be humble because we follow this goodness. It's not like you practice the truth because you know it. Your heart itself changed into the truth. Your heart changed into the truth and goodness. It's not like you practice the truth because you were told to do. Your heart itself changed into goodness. So, whatever you do is goodness itself. It comes out automatically. I'm telling you again, not quarreling nor crying out is a part of a being humble. But the character of spiritual goodness in these cases is that one cannot break peace because one follows spiritual goodness. One cannot break peace because one follows spiritual goodness. Even in a situation where one has a good reason to break peace, one would not and cannot break peace. 
Rather than crying out and being recognized, one wants to be humble because one follows goodness. Because one has goodness, he wants to raise others up even if he humbles himself. This is goodness. This is a good heart. Father God is looking for such people. Father God is going to refine such people to be a great vessel. If you have such a heart, you are the one Father God is looking for. He actually did in the Bible. Father God refined them to be a great vessel and gave His power for the kingdom of God. If the Father God gives His power to many people, then the whole world will be evangelized easily. However, there is no one who is qualified to receive the power of God. There is no one who fulfilled every single aspect of the truth. If Father God gives His power to a person who is not sanctified yet, then the person would probably become arrogant in a short period of time and go astray. Though he does well at first, after a few years, he might ask for money. Lust conceives, and he becomes arrogant. He changes like this. Father God cannot give His power until one becomes the vassal that Father God wants him to be. It is because he would degenerate into bad. Let me give you another example. When you do the voluntary works for the church, and if you have the fruit of goodness, you will be faithful in not only one thing, but also in all God's house. If you neglect any of your duties, there might be somebody who suffers because of that. God's kingdom might not be accomplished as it should be. So if you have goodness in you, you will not feel un I mean you will not feel comfortable about these things. You cannot just neglect them. So you will try to be faithful in all God's house. I believe you can apply this principle to all other characters of spirit. You know the wisdom from what you heard, right? If you come into goodness, you have wisdom, understanding, and dis discernment. The heart of goodness can discern everything, and wisdom and understanding follow. Why? It is the heart of our Lord. Let me conclude this message, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Those who are evil will be uncomfortable if they do not give out evil. They can't stand it. They just have to give it out. A foul-mouthed person should fire foul language. He can't, can't keep it. If he feels uncomfortable with his neighbor, then he should, you know, quibble over it because he can't stand it. You know, a hot-tempered person is always yelling. You know, let him not yell, and he can't stand it. it you know, <laughs> he has to do it. That's the way he lives. Can you imagine food that does not have salt? It's just like that. You know, a person who tends to cut off in the middle of a conversation, let him not do that. <laughs> he can't stand it. He can't. If you have bad habits against the truth like this, you should keep them in mind and try to get rid of them one by one. If you get rid of them one by one, after one year or two, most of them will be gone. Will be gone, it will be gone rid of. You know? Then you can become a person who can be trusted by others. However, if you don't make an effort and just give up, you know, saying, I have too much to throw away and I cannot make it, then you will stay the same where you are. Even though they hurt others' feelings or give hard time to them, they can be at peace only after doing what they want. That's the way evil persons do. Okay? But the men of goodness can, are the opposite. If they do not follow goodness, they will have more uncomfortable feelings than when they suffer a loss, and they will think about it repeatedly. Let's say... A church member broke peace with you and left this church because of you. Then the memory would always haunt you and you will regret it over and over again. Because of me, someone or family left the church. Well, then you are going to have pangs of conscience 
and you will be troubled you know, maybe until the judgment day. What would Father God say to you? You should not lose even just one soul, and you should not lose even a little one. But if someone left this church because of you, then you should get him back. If you couldn't, though he left because of his evil, the memory would haunt you. If you had a good heart, you would feel like that. Otherwise, you will just blame the person for his evil. So even though they suffer some loss, they don't want to harm others. Even though they find it uncomfortable, they try to keep the rules. We can feel this hard from what Apostle Paul said. He had the faith to eat meat, but if it could cause any other person to stumble, he didn't want to eat any meat for the remainder of his life. You should know the truth correctly. Some people do not know the spiritual meaning of the truth and use the word of God mindlessly. There are quite a few who teach the word of God without practicing it. If you use this word of God as the Apostle Paul when you go to heaven, didn't you eat any meat in your whole life? You should know the spiritual meaning of what the Apostle Paul said. It didn't mean that Apostle Paul didn't eat any meat in his entire life. If what he eats causes his brother to stumble, he would never eat meat again. Didn't the Apostle Paul really eat you know, any meat for his entire life? N not eating be beef or lamb? If what they can enjoy might cause any kind of discomfort to others, they would rather not enjoy it and find it happier to give it up for the sake of others. You should have this kind of heart. You can enjoy all things, but if something makes others uncomfortable, then not enjoying it should make you feel more peaceful and happy. You are not, you're not like, you know, I hate it, it's hard, or why should I not enjoy what I want? But rather, not enjoying should make you feel happy and peaceful. They cannot do anything that can embrace others, and they can never do something that can make the Holy Spirit in them grow. But if you have much untruth in your heart, if you don't have good conscience, then you cannot hear the groan of the Holy Spirit. Because you have, you have much untruth in you, you cannot hear the groan of the Holy Spirit. If a man of truth doesn't do good things, then the Holy Spirit groans. The Holy Spirit groans in agony. That's why the man only does good deeds. He is goodness itself. So he does only goodness. He is goodness itself. So he does only goodness. How can these people do evil? Likewise, those who follow goodness in all things are the ones who are bearing the fruit of spiritual goodness. If you also bear the fruit of spiritual goodness, you will have the attitude of the Lord. You won't do anything that can make even a little one stumble. You will have goodness and humbleness on the outside as well. You will be respectable having the form of the Lord, and your behavior and language will all be perfect. To be respected, to be loved, you should be like this. You will be beautiful in everyone's sight, giving out the fragrance of Christ. I hope that you will bear the fruit of spiritual goodness quickly and give out the aroma of Christ to the whole world. And may you give the glory to God in all things and be recognized as the children who resemble God perfectly. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your grace and love. Bless us to have what we heard today become faith and life. Give us grace upon grace so that we can accomplish the heart of goodness. We may say we are good and we live a conscious life. But as we check the deep bottom of our hearts, we may find what we are short of. Father God, help us. Father God, bless us. 
Thank you, Father God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN and Mamin TV viewers, and those who are receiving this prayer via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Let all new and unknown diseases, including swine flu, depart from them, be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bones of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. What are the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Holy Spirit are born as the Holy Spirit comes into the heart. And the seed of life grows up. 
to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, you should obey the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your Christian life. As you follow the desires of the Holy Spirit, obeying His guidance, your spirit will grow up to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, goodness is the quality of being gentle, considerate, kind-hearted, and virtuous. In a spiritual sense, however, it is the heart that seeks goodness in the Holy Spirit, which is the goodness in the truth. Just by having the desire to follow goodness, we cannot say we have borne the fruit of goodness. We can say we bear the fruit only when that desire to follow goodness is shown as action. Just like a person who sprayed perfume will give out a nice fragrance, those with goodness will give out the fragrance of Christ. In Luke chapter 10, we have the parable of the Good Samaritan. A man was robbed while traveling, and he was half dead. This Samaritan had pity on him and covered his wounds. Another verse that lets us feel spiritual goodness is Matthew 12, verses 19 and 20. It is about the spiritual goodness of Jesus. Goodness is the nature of God, and it is a very broad concept. The distinctive aspects of spiritual goodness are the desire to follow such goodness and the strength to actually practice it.